Hi there, this is Paul Colmsey from Seven Sigma in Perth. I've decided to record this video because it's quite common that people want to handle photos with Power Apps and get those photos into SharePoint. Now, as I record this video, this capability is not there yet natively within Power Apps. So, the purpose of this video is to show you what I think is a reasonably um, effective solution to handle the upload of rich media from Power Apps into SharePoint. And a secondary goal is to showcase perhaps some of the hidden capabilities, the hidden gems of both Power Apps and Flow. So to get started, I need to come up with a sample little app. So I have Power Apps Studio open, and we're going to do a basic proof of concept uh, application. Okay, so we are going to need to take a picture. That's our first thing to do. Now, fortunately, Power Apps has a control, a built-in control to take a picture. Uh, in fact, it has two. I'm going to use the Add Picture control because this uses the native capability of the device. In other words, if you have a fancy Samsung phone with a fantastic camera, if you use this control, the Add Picture control, when a user clicks it, it actually loads up Samsung's software for taking photos rather than using Power Apps, which gives you much more control over whether it's selfie mode, a standard picture, changing brightness, contrast, etc. So we're going to need that. The next thing we're also going to need is a button because every time you take a picture, I want to actually add the photo to an in-memory table. I want to remember the photo. So I'm going to add a button and let's put it here and let's call it Take Photo. Awesome. So we've taken a photo. Or we'll we're about to. Now, every time we take a photo, we want to add it to a screen so we can see them. So we want to uh, have sort of a, a gallery of photos. Uh, and conveniently, we have this control up here called a gallery. And so this is basically a form of displaying data. Now, the, there's different templates for the galleries. I'm going to go with a vertical gallery for now because I think that suits the sort of data I want to capture. I'm just going to move it over here. Now, at the moment, this gallery has some random data in it. Why? Well, the items property of this gallery is actually set to an internal or just some sample data called custom gallery sample. In a moment, we're going to change that. We're actually going to change the gallery so it actually um, retrieves its data from an in-memory table inside Power Apps. So let's do that. First up, on the select property, so in other words, when you click this button, we have to add stuff to a table or a collection called in Power Apps. The function is called collect. So if I say collect, and the first parameter it says, well, what's the name of the collection? Where are you going to store this stuff? You can come up with any name you want here. So I'm going to call mine photo list. Next it says, okay, well, that's great. What are you going to store in this collection? So in other words, what are the fields? And so what we're going to do is using a sort of a JavaScript format with curly braces, the first thing I want to store in this photo is the actual picture itself. So I'm going to call it photo. What am I storing with that photo? Well, if you have a look at this camera control up here, which is over here, there is actually a sub control in it called uploaded images three. Now that is actually where the photo gets stored. Every time you click a photo or take a picture, it gets stored there. So check this out. If I go um, up, uh, uploaded image three, there it is, it's found it, and look for a property called dot image, that is storing whatever is um, in the image property. And every time a photo is taken, that gets changed. So that's the photo that I want to store. Now I want to generate a file name for it. For now though, so the param I'm going to also store the file name for each photo, but I'm just going to call this um, boo.jpg. So very unimaginative and hard-coded. I am going to fix this later, so don't worry. But let's just test some things. So this collects photo photos into a collection called photo list and it clicks the image and generates a file name. Let's actually now come back into my gallery over here and I'm going to change the items property of the gallery to photo list. And there it goes. Let's do a little test and see what happens. So this gallery is now bound to the same in-memory table that photos are going to be added to via that collect function. Let's test. Take a picture. Now when I take a picture because it's on my laptop and not an iPad or a, a camera, I'm not going to be asked to use a camera. It just pops up a file selector. And because I happen to have written a book that involves teddy bears, I have a lot of pictures of teddy. So trust me, this is perfectly normal. Let me grab this teddy 
And let's pretend I just took a selfie. And if I go take photo, check it out. Bam, straight away in the gallery, we now see the Teddy plus the file. Let's change the picture. Take another picture. And look at that, we now have this, the different Teddy there. And actually, to, to test this, this is a useful troubleshooting and debug thing. If I go to the file menu and I go collections, you can actually see there is my collection called photo list. And so um, Power Apps gives you a little preview of the first five items in your collection. Now, of course, I can absolutely keep on taking heaps and heaps of photos and it's all going to be great, um, but that's not probably going to be that exciting for you as a viewer. So let's do the next stage. Let's do something about this file name. Let's generate a better file name. Right, so we'll edit this collect function, we'll generate a better file name, then what we'll do is we'll save this app and we're going to turn our attention to flow because what we now want to do is upload this into SharePoint with this correct file name. Okay, so for simplicity's sake, I'm not going to go particularly crazy with this, but we're clearly not going to use a string anymore. We have to actually generate this file name a little more cleverly. But we're going to use a function called concatenate. So this is a function concatenate that joins strings together. So we're going to concatenate. Now that my first parameter, you can see the parameters up there, it's asking for different things of text, globs of text. So if I just went something simple and I went file, right, my next parameter is going to be like a count, you know, file one, file two, file three. So if I said there's a function also called count rows, count rows. Now what is count rows? Well this will count the number of rows in a collection or a data source and I have a collection that's called photo list over here so if I said count the number of rows in photo list okay and then on the end of that let's put dot jpeg something like that and close the bracket so now there's our concatenate function okay now the count rows function returns an integer because it's literally counting how many photos are in the in the photo list. Now the concatenate function, its job is to join globs of text together. So we have to do one other thing. We have to convert the output of this count rows function into text. Luckily for us, there is already a function called text, which purpose in life is to convert things to text. And if you have a look now, you can see that what we're doing is we're saying, so the file name is going to be the word file, whatever the number of rows with a .jpg. So let's have a look and see how that goes, shall we? Okay, here we go. Take a photo. Ooh, file0.jpg, I'm liking this. Take a photo again. File1.jpg, file2.jpg. So straight away you can see how we can um, create, I guess, dynamic content or uh, within Power Apps, generate uh, metadata we need. So hopefully that gives you a sense of what you can do in terms of generating file names. There are much more sophisticated ways and generally what I tend to do is use other information supplied by the user to generate a file name. So a quick example, I won't go through it in, in heaps of detail, but this is the gist. So if I add file, I'm going to add another parameter to the concatenate, which is this. Okay, so what did I do here? I've added this extra little bit. So what I've um, used is a function called today. Today returns the date, date and time. And this second part of the function is simply the format that I want the date and time to be returned in. And I got this from the Power Apps documentation. Again, because it's a bit like the, uh, the a bit like the count rows function, it actually returns it as a date format, and I need to turn it into a string so that I can concatenate. So the net result of all of this, if we try it, should be now a file that is a lot more unique. So you can see here, file. It's got a date and it's got a count in there. And so you can see how, I won't go any further on generating a date, you can use your own imagination, use other information in your app, say a job number or an audit number or whatever else is identifying what you're doing, but you can see how quickly you can generate uh, unique file names or, or semi-unique file names via Power Apps. So the next stage is, um, we're actually kind of done here for now. Let's actually turn our attention to Flow and see what we can do about getting this stuff into SharePoint. Okay, so 
normally, under most circumstances, if you were to um, send this information to SharePoint using Flow, you would do it kind of like this. You would insert another button and let's just put this over here and maybe call it submit. Okay, submit. And while I'm here, I think that really should be called add to gallery. Add to gallery, I think makes a bit more sense. But this is basically submit, let's call this one submit to flow. Now, normally, this is the typical thing you would expect to do using the out of the box functionality. In the action menu, you have this option flows. And if you click flows, in fact, I'll take you through it. You come into here and it says, would you like to use one of your existing flows, which I don't want to do, or would you like to make a brand new flow? Now, if we made a brand new flow, here's what actually happens. So we say, yep, we'll make a flow. It actually now signs me into my Microsoft Flow instance, and it started, it's basically run the create flow process. And you can see that by default, it's assuming that you're going to trigger this flow from Power Apps. So Power Apps is your trigger. Now that makes perfect sense, it's intrinsically makes sense, uh, except that's not what we're going to do. So this method of invoking uh, flow from Power Apps has a couple of limitations, and one of them, at present anyway, as I, as I record this, is related to handling photos. Uh, I'm going to channel a presentation I did at a recent conference to explain. So I'll just quickly switch to PowerPoint and put it in presentation mode. Right now, in terms of Power Apps, you have four options for getting photos into SharePoint. It's actually more than four, but these are the four, I guess, archetype options. Number one, Microsoft have stated that they will support sending photos uh, direct to SharePoint natively. I suspect uh, it's probably about a week or two off the Ignite conference for 2017. I suspect that's when the announcement will be made. But right now, as I um, record this video, it cannot be done with the current version of Power Apps and Flow out there. So what else can we do? One method is called the data URI method. Now that is the method I used to use and I've written blog posts about this. Uh, I don't use it anymore. Um, it has one major advantage that you can actually send off a whole bunch of photos in one single flow transaction. So you take 15 photos in your gallery, you send them to flow, it's considered one flow run. Why is that important? Well, the free version of flow gives you, I think, uh, one or two thousand free um, flow runs before you start then paying for use. So this method is good in terms of it doesn't use excess, excessive flow use and it supports metadata and being able to do various things. Um, but the only the thing that kills it for me is it only works with the current Power Apps camera control. Recall at the start of the um, session I indicated that I was using the uh, camera control that allows the device to take native or that uses the native camera for taking photos. Um, so once you use that device, this method is precluded. So that's a big no why I don't use this method. The method we're using is this one, use the flow HTTP request method. It works with the native camera control. By the way, it also uh, works with recording audio. That's a really nice feature as well. Um, there's a little bit of work to set up as you're about to see, but probably the one thing to be aware of is it's one flow run per photo. So if you had an app and you took 15 photos in your gallery and you click submit, it will be 15 flows recorded for that particular uh, transaction. Um, in a situation where you have one or 2,000 free flows a month, there is that risk that you could run over that, run over that list. This method, by the way, I hope to record something about this. It's a super powerful method using PowerShell and PNP libraries with Azure functions, but it's beyond the scope of what we're going to talk about today. Now, so what's the deal with Flow? Number one, here's the way Flow works. Everything in Flow is triggered. There's always an event that kicks off a Flow. Uh, the example I have here is it's actually Dynamics. So when a record is created in Dynamics for this particular organization name against the leads entity, then go off and send someone an email and then information from this trigger is passed to this action to do something. Now we are gonna use a trigger and an action, but we're not using the Power Apps one. So here's the gist. In Power Apps, when you submit your request, what happens is 
we're going to have this lovely function called upload file and it's going to ask us for some parameters it'll ask us for file name and in our case it'll probably only ask us for file name but you can see here that it's asking for all of this lovely metadata and it's nice for the user of power or the author of power apps because they don't have to do anything particularly complex on the flow side we're using a request response trigger okay which basically as I said turns flow into a web service what we then do is we're going to use some SharePoint related flow actions like grab a file, we're going to extract metadata, we're going to do various things and the picture will end up in a asset library in SharePoint. That's the basic gist of flow but that doesn't really explain how the flow author gets this nice friendly upload file kind of thing going on um, and so the way we're going to do that is we have to use something called a swagger file but this is basically a file that describes this flow or this particular web service in a way that Power Apps can consume. So this is basically like a metadata standard that describes web services to consuming uh, applications like Power Apps in a consistent fashion. And so what we're actually going to be doing is creating a custom connector to flow. That custom connector will read one of these files, which in turn creates a data source which is what is then used from Power Apps. So that's the theory part of it done with. Now let's actually build this thing. Okay, so now I have logged into my instance of Flow. And as I said in the theory interlude, I'm now going to make a Flow. Now I'm creating a blank Flow, not based on a template and I'm not using any of these existing triggers. I mentioned triggers earlier with flow. So I'm going to actually come into the search and the trigger I'm going to use is the HTTP request response trigger. Now you can tell because it's got that kind of green globe look about it. And I'm going to use that as my trigger. Cool. Now let's give this a name. So let's go demo photo to SharePoint. And you can't actually create a flow on a trigger alone, you have to have an action. So what I'm going to do is I want to add an action. Basically right now we want to do some debugging and proof of concept stuff. So we're not going to complete it yet. I want to make sure you understand this request response trigger really well. So I'm going to add a step in here and I'm going to add an action. And the action is called a compose action. And compose belongs to a family of actions called data operations. So let me just click on this. So there are all sorts, and this is basically manipulating variables and manipulating data in the context of a flow. So what I'm going to do is add a compose action. And so what are the inputs to this compose? Well, luckily for me, um, and you can see here that I can actually automatically get the body, the request body from this. I can get the request headers um, and pass it straight into a compose so I can see what's going on. Now, we're going to be sending stuff through the headers and the body, so I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to use an expression. And if you have a look down here, an expression, there's um, a language called Workflow Definition Language, WDL, which has a, exposes a whole bunch of functions to make life easier for you. And as I scroll down here, there's look lots of different functions that do all sorts of interesting things. Um, but there's one here called Trigger. And this trigger function basically, in fact, as the name entails, it says enables an expression to derive its value from other JSON name and value pairs or the output of the runtime trigger. Now that output of runtime trigger is the key word. The runtime trigger is this, this request. So if I simply have a function called trigger, it's going to give me everything that was sent to this request from Power Apps or whatever other application is using this web service. So let's actually take a look at this because it's quite interesting. So let me create this flow. Uh, make sure there's my trigger. Okay, there's my trigger function. Create me a flow. Save the flow. Okay, now I'll click done just so you can see this is the main flow overall page and it hasn't been run yet. Notice that the run history is empty. Now I'm going to use a tool called Postman which is quite a popular tool for developers for doing a bit of testing. So what I need to do first is if I go back into this flow and I go back into this request, now that I've saved it, it's generated me a web service URL. And I'm going to need that URL because I'm going to actually call it from somewhere. So I've copied it to the clipboard. Let's close that again and go back out to the main page. Cool. Now I'll come back to this tool Postman. So Postman allows me 
to test web services. And I've just pasted here the URL that was generated from Flow just a second ago. And in fact, just to show you what sort of things you can do, and anyone in SharePoint might find this familiar, if I said and param equals boo, just adding an extra bit of stuff to this, um, this post, if I send that to Flow, it says sending, and it's come up and said accepted, lovely. Let's go and see what Flow has done. If I come back in and refresh this page, lo and behold, Flow has now succeeded. We have had a run. Let's go and have a look. We click this. And it actually shows us that, yep, here was the request that came through. Cool. What did Compose give us? What is the outputs of that trigger function? Well, you can see here it's outputted a whole bunch of interesting stuff. Okay, all sorts of stuff. And you can see it's, you know, there's go, it, Postman is what's sent it. And if you have a look in here, look, param boo. So it's actually picked up the parameter that I have sent to Flow. Now this is really important because now we have to work out how can we send files to this Flow. So let's let's close this again and let's use Postman to figure it out. Um, go back to Postman and this time Postman has cool things. Like for example, I can go, actually I want to edit the body now. I want to come into the body here and I'm going to send some form data and the form data is going to be a file and let me choose a file. The file can be cat.jpg. I'm good with that. There you go, there's my file. Let's send this all together. Sent. Right. Now we go back to flow. Let's refresh and we should see a second run, which has also succeeded. Let's have a look. So we come in here, we go into this compose action and we look in here and lo and behold, suddenly not only do we have the parameter, but there's now a body, content type, all sorts of stuff. In fact, it's saying it's a multi-part form data. Then there's the content itself, and you can. This is the image that's all been decoded, probably into base 64. And look, I'm not an expert in web services and HTML, but the point is, oh, there you go. You can see there information about the content, its file name, content type, so on and so forth. So basically, we now have also everything we need to basically um, take action in this flow. So hopefully that makes sense. Let me go into the edit flow again. So we have this function called trigger and um, it turns out actually there's a few clever things you can do. I'll show you what I mean. So for example, rather than just pull all of the trigger information here, I'm going to get rid of this and let's actually make it a bit more specific. So I'm going to use an expression like this. I'm actually saying use the trigger function, but then traverse the output and look for something called outputs and then queries and then something called file name. So let's go back to Postman. So back in Postman, if, let's, if we come back into this where I had param equals boo, what if we went file name equals um, my file dot jpeg. And let's send that. Okay, go back and have a look at flow. We can see our run has succeeded. And if we have a look, this time I'm going to grab some of this stuff. In fact, I'll copy it to clipboard, just the entire output. And we'll have a look at it in Notepad just for a bit of uh, debug. So in Notepad, here we go. So a lot more stuff has come through. And you can see here, there's this section outputs. So the output of the web service call included a whole bunch of stuff in the headers that's fine. Then there's a section called queries and there's our parameter file name myfile.jpg and then in the body section is the actual file itself right and that's all in, that's the, the jpeg file all encoded okay and that's the, the majority of this web service request. So why is this important? Well I want you to keep an eye on this outputs, headers, outputs, queries, outputs, body because if I edit my flow I'm going to get rid of this generic compose function now. This is I'm going to get rid of the just the trigger command and I'm going to put in something else. If we come into our expression now, how about this? If you have a look closely, we're saying 
run trigger function but only go to the output section and only go to the query section and only go to the file name section. So I'm going to click OK and I'm going to rename this to get file name. Let's update the flow. Cool. And actually I'm not going to click done this time because watch what happens when you edit. If I go back to Postman and in Postman in the header this time, instead of myfile.jpg, myfile123.jpg, remember the parameters called file name passed in the header, let's go send. Alright, let's have a look, back in, back in flow, let's have a look and see what's happened. Flow is refreshed, here we go. What does file name give us? Bam, we're straight to the file. So the point that I wanted to make there is trigger. the trigger function gives you everything but you can then, uh, using the workflow definition language, drill down to the specific stuff you want. Now similarly, that means the output of this function is the file name that we need. So let's add another step. And the st this step is the actual file itself. So I'm going to use another compose action. Compose action and... Where it is, here comes compose, it's a data operation. Compose. And check out this expression. So if you look closely, you see there's actually another function called trigger multi-part body. And so this is actually, you can use the trigger function itself and drill down, but this is almost like a kind of helper function that still calls trigger, but drills automatically down to what we want. So basically this is saying we want the content available. And watch this. So, and I'll rename this one to get me the file. Rename get file. Update flow. Right, let's have a look. Back to Postman. Remember we have cat.jpg there. Um, and we now are sending, we're still sending the file name in here, my file one, two, three. So let's go my file four, five, six, and let's send. Okay. Back in flow. If we wait, it'll run again. In fact, it might have run already. So let's have a look. Uh, the request came through. The file name is this time my file 456. Fantastic. What's the file? Now you see this value too large to display. That's because it's it's an encoded JPEG. It's just too large to see on the screen here. So if you wanted to debug or if you really wanted to know is it the correct data that we need, I suggest adding another step and either dropping the file into Dropbox or sending it to you as an email or something like that. And that's how you can tell. So what we have to do now is actually th this is base64 encoded data. It's actually not binary format. And if we're going to send it to SharePoint, it has to be in proper binary format. But luckily for us, in this list of functions that you get in, in Flow, um, you have a set of conversion functions. And one of them is called base64 to binary. So if I add that function, now it's putting it in the wrong spot, so let's do a bit of adjustment. So if I say, okay, I want to convert to binary the stuff that's been sent, the file that's been sent in the body, okay? And that will now turn it into binary. So let's update. And what we're going to do now as a final step is, should we test this? Yeah, let's actually put it into SharePoint right now. So if we go new step, add an action, and let's do an action called create. SharePoint has a create file action. So let's go find, there's a SharePoint set of actions. And there it is, there's create file. Okay, SharePoint then says, which site do you want to actually use? And so let me put in my demo tenant, comsy.sharepoint.com. So that's where I'm going to put it. Then it says, well, where are you actually going to put this thing? And at this point, what it's saying is, well, which document library or list do you want to use? Or document library, really. So what I'm going to do is come into here and just use the standard shared documents library shared documents library. So I'm going to put this file into shared documents. What am I going to call the file? Well, we've already generated the file name from the compose, compose function. So since I know the file name, I simply come along, I click in here, I look at the, the get file name action here, and I want the output of get file name. That's what we're going to call it. What's the content? What's the body? That's going to be the binary output of get file. So there's get file output. 
And so what I've now basically created is a web service that will take the file name passed to it, grab the file name from the request body, and basically send it to SharePoint. So let's update the flow. Awesome. And let's actually test it out. First, let's just test it using Postman. So I'm going to come back to Postman. And we'll still use cat.jpg. We use everything as it is, except we'll change the file name now to my file 789 send. Off it goes. Let's now go back to SharePoint and let's have a look in the document library. And so there we go, we have a file, myfile789.jpg. If we click it, we should see a picture of a cat. Lovely. So we've proved that the flow is actually now working. And if we go and have a look at our flow history, we can see that it's just succeeded. So we are super happy. Okay, so now we have achieved two things. We've got the flow end done and we have the Power Apps end done. Now we have to somehow hook them together. Now coming back to Power Apps, we still actually have a button called Submit to Flow, but it's actually not doing anything. We haven't actually wired it up to call that flow. And we already established that we can't just basically use the built-in action where we say go and run a flow, because that assumes that the trigger for the workflow, which is here, we're assuming that it's a Power Apps trigger, but in actual fact, this is a request response trigger. So this is where we come to the crazy part of the discussion. So now let's go back and look at PowerPoint to make this clear. If you have a look here, you can see that we've now got this part of flow done. We've built our workflow out and we've proved that a document will land in the library we wish it to. So if you recall coming back to our conceptual diagram, we had this piece of middleware here that we had to build, what's called a Swagger file or more recently an open API file. Now, I have to say that I actually found that quite difficult to do the first time I did it. So I'm hoping in this video that uh, if I slow down a little bit, I'll save you some of the trouble. And in fact, um, I did this all manually the first time. It's a lot easier these days to do it. So just to recall that basically this is a file that describes this flow in a way that Power Apps can consume. And once Power Apps consumes it, it becomes basically a custom data connection and it's as easy for the Power Apps author as typing in the name of a function and passing in the parameters. So how are we going to do this? Well fortunately we don't actually have to build out this configuration file manually because I discovered a really nice elegant way of doing it. Okay so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to come back to my flow and I'm going to grab the URL from the flow request. I'm going to copy that to clipboard again. And there is a lovely website or a tool called the Open API Spec Generator. And you can see the URL there, specgen.apistudio.io. But if you Google Open API Spec Generator, you will get, get this. And what we're going to do is I'm going to take the URL from Flow and I'm going to paste it into here. Okay, first I need to change it from a GET request to a POST request because if you think about it, Power Apps is posting information to our flow. It'll post a, post a file name and it'll post the file itself. Now just to test that the API is working, I'm going to send this and we'll just see that we get a response. And look, we have a response code 202. That is actually fine. That means we've gotten some information. So what we're going to do now is we're going to basically click this next step and we're going to work our way through this wizard and put um, friendly information about this web service we're calling to generate a Swagger file. So if I click next step, the first thing is I need to actually give this API a title and I'll give it a description. Next I'll put myself in the contact information. Uh, for my URL I guess I'll use my blog. And my contact email is going to be this. Cool. License and terms. Um, for the purposes of our demo, I am good with the default license. So let's go to the next step. Right. Now, what is this all about? This is actually an important screen because this is where we tune some aspects of how Power Apps is going to talk to this API. 
Now, the first thing you might notice is it's gone a little bit crazy with the amount of data here. That's just, I guess, a um, design flaw of this particular site. But we do have to edit this base path. If I move this up, what it's actually doing is traversing the URL and you can see that it's starting to put together the base path there. And it, you, can, you notice that if I keep sliding this, what it's actually doing is you can see that if you look at the API path parameter here and the base path, you can see that as I slide, it's changing the URL and reducing the amount of um, items in the path for the uh, one below and increasing the base, base path. Um, I'm going to just leave the base path as workflows and the API path is the instance of the workflow and then the other details it needs. And by the way, it's actually pulled this out of the URL that was actually cut and pasted into the first step of the wizard. Uh, we are happy that it's going to be HTTPS and the operation name I'm going to give here, I'm going to call this post photo and the summary is going to be post photo to SharePoint. So let's go to the next step. Now the next part of this wizard is asked for some information about what goes into the headers of this request. For what we're doing, we're not actually messing with the headers, we're passing information in the body of the HTTP request as well as the URL, the file name in the URL. So we can leave this section blank and move to the next step. Now, this is the one that is also an important one. This information here is actually directly related to the information in the URL. It's extracted it from the URL in Flow. Now, the important thing is we actually, we need this stuff. These parameters that you're seeing here are really important and we absolutely need them inside the call to this Flow web service. However, we don't want to present this information or have the user have to provide this information inside Power Apps. So I'm going to mark this as not required, but we are later on going to set it as default. So we're going to do this with the other parameters as well. Cool. So that's the parameters. Uh, we are going to need to add some parameters later on. So let's go to the next step. Now this is another step where we don't really need to do anything. This is where some URLs um, have, sim have symbols or you might have a variable that you insert here to actually change the URL dynamically. We don't need to do that so we can move to the next step. And finally we have our Swagger file. So everything here is basically what's just been generated by running through the wizard. Now we're not completely done, we have to do a few changes to this file, but this is basically the thing we need. So at this point I'm going to download this file and save it and then I'm going to open it up in Notepad. Okay, so we are now looking at our Swagger file. And you can see a lot of the information I put into this is already there. So some of the things we need to do to actually get this thing working. First up, as we come down to the file, I'm not going to go through, I figured out what this, all the various parameters of this mean, but I'm not here to teach you swagger, I'm just here to show you how you can modify it to quickly do what you need. Remember that in our flow, when I was using Postman, I had an extra parameter. I'll come back to Postman and have a look at a URL. I had this thing called file name, right? And so now we have to tell swagger that actually I also want a file name and this is the parameter that I want it supplied from Power Apps. So here's how we do that. So using the similar layout here I'm going to add another parameter. So if I put a comma here and I'm going to paste it and then talk about it. So I have just added a parameter to this file. I've called it file. Its name is file name. Where is this parameter coming from? Well, it's going to be in the query string that comes in, the URL when you do the post. What's the description? We're going to call it the file name of the uploaded file. Is it required? Yes, it's absolutely required and it's going to be a string. So that takes care of the file name, but that's not the only parameter we want. We also need the file itself to be sent from Power Apps. So let's take care of that now. Okay, so now I've added another parameter called file, or I could call it photo, I guess. And this time, where is this coming from? Well, it's actually going to be sent in form data. Now, this is a reserved word in the open API definition, but just to make it clear, this corresponds to, if you remember, when I was doing this URL, I chose, we're also in the body, we're going to send form data, and I'm going to send a file, and I'm sending cat.jpg. So basically, this is saying this API expects a parameter called file in the form data. 
there's its description, and it is also required. And this time, what type of data it is, it's an actual file. It's not a string. So you can see that that actually is quite similar to what we saw in Postman that we were using to test. I think I have everything done. So let's save this file. I'm going to save it. And let's call this one blog blog demo. I'll put it in my Paras folder. That's fine. Save. Now, here comes the big test. Let's see if this works. Now we're going to turn our attention to Power Apps. Now, back in Power Apps, I need to actually tell Power Apps about this new custom connection. How am I going to do that? Easy. If I go to the File menu, and if I go to Connections, you will see it actually is going to open it in the browser. So it opens up Power Apps and takes you to a page where you can manage custom connections. Okay, here are a whole bunch of connections that I've been doing. And if you have a look up, there's a cog here, Manage Custom Connections. If I click this, here's some previous ones that I've done. I'm going to make a custom connector. And at this point it says, would you like to upload an API file? I absolutely would because I just made one. So let's grab. Okay, so we'll grab our JSON file that we've been working with and we will open it. And what happens is, so now based on that JSON file, it's suggesting a connector name. So let's um, photo to SharePoint, just to make it even clearer, maybe let's make it sh SPO, SharePoint Online Demo. Um, and we look down here, we can see that it's also done things like pulled out the description from the JSON file, including a typo I did, so I've corrected that. If we click continue, it asks us for an authentication type. We don't actually need to worry about that with this API because one of those four parameters that we were dealing with earlier, the signature is in effect an API key. And we're going to basically have it all behind the scenes. So if I click continue, um, you can see here it's then come up. And this is why I made a point of the operation name uh, earlier in the piece because there it is there. And keep an eye on that one because we're going to, you'll see it in Power Apps in a moment. Um, I will actually just, it's giving me a sort of a warning saying you don't have a description, so why not let's put a description in, make it happy. And now here is something that literally is hot off the press. This is something that, that actually caused me a bit of an issue as I was recording this webinar today. Now if we come down into this file, you can see the various parameters in the query string that we're going to be working with. Now, what I've uh, just found out is the way I've been doing this for about the last six weeks has suddenly changed. So Murphy's Law, right in the middle of a webinar, it changed. Uh, but the nice thing about this is you can actually edit the Swagger file or edit the definition within the context of Power Apps. So this API version, I had marked it to um, not required. And you can see that it doesn't have the little star there. That's actually signifying that something's required. Well, it turns out that I have to mark it as required now uh, and do something slightly different. So for API version pr uh, parameter, if we come in here and go edit, you can actually see there's the default value for the API version. And if we come in, we've got to say, actually, it is required. We must send it. However, I want it to be in internal, which basically means invisible. Power Apps is not going to ask for it. And so what Power Apps will do instead, it'll just put the default value in for free for us behind the scenes. Now, we need to do that same thing with the other four parameters too. So if I click back, um, I'm going to make this change and you won't have to sit through it in the webinar. Okay, so now when you look, I've marked them as all... Uh, required fields and they're also internal so they shouldn't be prompted in Power Apps. The exception to the rule is file name. We want Power Apps to ask us for the file name. So without further ado, let's see if this connector gets created. So you can see the files now being uploaded and being saved. And excellent, we have our custom connector created. That's terrific. So now that we have that, we can close this and you will see our new connector and there it is there, photo to SPO demo, the one I created. It's right there. Now we can go back to Power Apps and actually test this thing. So we're at the cool bit. So if I jump back into Power Apps, I actually still have my, my app open and here it is here. So this app here, if I actually now click on the main screen and I click onto data in the screen properties, I can add a data source. So what I will do here now, it will actually say, do you want to connect to any of your existing data connections? Well, actually, no, we haven't yet connected to um, the new one. So we're going to actually make a new connection. So if we click New Connection, now it lists all of the various connectors. 
And if you have a look here, there is the one we want, photo to SPO demo. So that's a connect door. And using the connect door, we're going to make a connection. So if I click that, it now is saying, would you like to make a data source create a connection? Yes, let's do it. And at this point, a connection now has been made to the data source. And there it is. So what are we going to do now? Now we're going to come back to our button here, our on select button, and we're going to basically tell it to send all of the items in this gallery, everything in that collection that we called picture list, we're going to send it to Flow. Now the way we're going to do this, because there's more than one picture, we have to do them one at a time. Fortunately, Flow provides, uh, sorry, fortunately Power Apps provides us with a handy way to do it. There is a function called for all. And for all basically says, okay, well for ev all of the photos in the photo list, so recall that that gallery that we're looking at there is actually just looking at the contents of this collection called photo list. So for all of the photos in the photo list, comma, we are going to, and if I start typing in photo to SP demo, there it is, dot post photo, there's that post photo again, so that was why I made a point of emphasizing it earlier. There's the post photo function, and look at this, it's now saying, well, give me the file name. Now, the nice thing about for all is because we've already told it we want to get it from the photo list, the photo list has two columns. One is called file name, one is called photo. And so all I literally have to do now is go the first parameter that it wants is the file name. There's the file name. The second parameter that we need is the photo. Let's grab the photo. Let's close that. Let's close that. And we are done. So now the is the time to test. So let's go to SharePoint and make sure everything's clear. So here's my SharePoint site. It's a blank site with a bit of dummy data in, but if we go to our main document library here, documents, at the moment it is empty. Now if you recall, if we go right back to our flow, let's go and have a look at flow, just to remind ourselves, this demo flow to SharePoint flow that we've been working on, the last action is called create file, and guess where it's putting its stuff? It's putting it in to the shared documents library. So right now, it is empty. We have now in Power Apps, we have created a connection to that flow, and we have just wired up the button to call the function that says for all of the photos in the photo list collection, and currently there are two of them, right? We are now gonna send them to flow. So let's try. So I already have the photos there. If I go submit to flow, bit of thinking, and it's back. So has it worked? Well, here is the big test. If we go into SharePoint, refresh, lo and behold, we have two files. If we actually examine this file, there's one teddy bear, and there's the other teddy bear. So that's terrific. That has basically shown that using, with no code, apart from a bit of trickery with a Swagger file, we've been able to get use Microsoft Flow to solve a Power Apps problem, where Power Apps can't natively upload photos into SharePoint. What we've been able to do is use Flow in a clever way to be able to achieve uh, that objective. So I thought that was very handy and you can actually expand this. Using Swagger you can add metadata, populate columns in document libraries and all sorts of different things. It's actually quite powerful and quite flexible uh, how you can do this. So I hope you got some value out of that. I hope you can use this in your own uh, Power Apps and Flow development. I think the technique is really, uh, really useful and I think it's a testament to how flexible Flow can be once you sort of scratch the surface. Um, and I think uh, it, it can only get better from here. So let me know if this uh, was of use to you and uh, I might record some more. Thanks a lot.